for uh, this computer. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I, I was just. Yeah. I was just telling all my, all my, uh, all my friends or oh, you, you guys to complete the UQ and also, if you think you're, I'm doing a good job, please also nominate me for education as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, all right, guys. So let me um, share screen. Share screen. Here we are. Okay, here we are. Um, so last last week and the week before last week, we talked about uh, one sample um, test. So just to summarize what we did last week. So basically, one sample test is like this. So, uh, we talked about three kinds of, I mean, we, we talked about uh, three kinds of one sample test. One is when you're testing for the population mean equal to mu zero uh, versus the alternative that mu is um, not equal to mu zero or or mu is less than mu zero, or mu is greater than mu zero, right? This is this is one thing when sigma squared is is known. Okay, this is one thing we talked about last week. And number two, we talked about was uh, we talked about population mean equal to mu zero um, versus um, versus mu not equal to mu zero um, mu less than mu zero and mu greater than mu zero. All right, so this is now, this is when, when the population variance sigma squared is not known or is not unknown. Okay. And, and one other thing we talked about uh, in the last two weeks is number three, For the population for the population proportion p equal to p zero versus the alternative that versus the alternative that p not equal to p zero p less than p zero and p greater than p zero right here p denotes the population proportion so these are these are three uh, one sample tests that we talked about it's kind of a summary of it's a summary of what we did so far so this is kind of a let me write summary a summary of what we did so far okay now um, the what we're going to talk about or start talking about today is the following right is um, So what we're going to start talking about today is two sample tests. So I mean, each of these tests is based on a, on a single sample, right? And so today we're going to start. Okay, there's a question. What is r squared? There's no r squared, so it's sigma squared. So sigma squared, not r squared. Sigma squared represents the uh, sigma squared. Is sorry, excuse me for my writing is so stupid. I don't know why I cannot write very well. I mean, this 
This is this is sigma squared, so not r squared. Sigma squared stands for the population variance, right? Not um, um, okay. Okay. Now, what we're going to start talking about today is two sample test. Two sample. Two sample test. I mean, each of these tests here are based on one sample, right? Um, whereas the, the test that we're going to talk about starting today is based on, each of them is based on two samples. All right, the first one, I, I'm just going to write down what the, what the names of the tests are. You no, I'll have a great day if we can look from Josh there. The first, the first test, uh, the first two sample test I'm going to talk about is testing for equality of population means corresponding to two samples when the corresponding population variances are are known. All right, that's number one. So number two I will talk about is the following: is testing. Testing for equality of uh, population means when population variances are unknown but equal. Right, that's number two I will talk about later. Number three I will talk about is testing. Testing for equality of population means when population variances are unknown and not equal. And finally, number four, I will talk. Number four, I will talk about is, is this one. Number four is testing for.
statistics for equality of population proportions. All right, so these are the four, each of these four tests involve two samples because we are trying to compare the population means corresponding to two samples or the population uh, proportions corresponding to uh, two different samples. All right, so that's why, um, excuse me, that's why each of these involves uh, two samples, all right? Okay, guys. Um, all right. So let, let me start with the first one, uh, number one, which is. So let me put. Uh, oh my, let me put a line here, and start with. Uh, start with the first. Uh, the first one, which is testing. Um, Sorry. This is the first the first test I'm going to consider. So you have uh, you'll see in a minute why. Um, so I'm going to suppose suppose you have two different samples, right? You have say x1 to xn iid. Uh, from a normal distribution with parameters mu x and sigma x squared. And uh, suppose you also have another sample, so, so let me call this xm, sorry. Uh, you have another random sample, y1 to yn iid from a normal distribution with parameters mu y and sigma y squared, right? And we are assuming that these are independent. Uh, are independent samples, right? We, we also assume. We also assume that. That the population variances, that is sigma x squared and sigma y squared, are known. Okay. So that's what I meant when you when you when you say that the population variances are known. I mean we are assuming that that sigma x squared and sigma y squared are known. Now, now we're going to test for equality of the population mean. So there are there are three kinds of uh, tests possible. A, um, you can test for the population means mu x equal to mu y, all right? Versus the alternative that mu x is not equal to mu y. Right? This is one possible test. Another, another possible test B, excuse me, my writing is not really good at all. This is this is uh, B and C.
these are these are three three possible tests each comparing the each comparing the population mean corresponding to the sample right mm -hmm. and you guys listen please The rejection rule for each of them is as follows. For the first one, the first one, the rejection rule will be as follows. So here x bar, x bar is the sample mean for the first sample, y bar is the sample mean for the second sample, and sigma x squared and sigma y squared are the population variances which we are assuming to be known, and m is the sample size for the first sample, n is the sample size for the second sample, right? And the rejection rule for the second um, The second is, this is the rejection rule for the second uh, hypo set of hypotheses. And the rejection rule for the third uh, set of hypotheses this one okay guys so now uh, you may you may ask me why where these where these rejection rules are coming from i mean this that's not part of this course but when you go to year two when you go to year two you will you will learn how to derive these rejection rules as part of the statistical methods course you will take in year two okay so so I, I would encourage you guys to take that course if you really want to know how these rules, how these rejection rules are derived, okay, you should take that course, okay. But for the moment, all I expect you to do is I expect you to apply these rejection rules. And as always, I will do a plenty of examples after I've done with this, I will do as many examples as you guys like okay so this is this is for the uh, just to reiterate just to re, um, kind of summarize this is for testing for equality of population means when the variances are not all right the second thing i'm going to talk about so that's that this is only the first uh, hypothesis uh, set of um Number two, I'm going to talk about testing This is testing for uh, equality of population. Sorry, what am I doing? Population means when population variances are non but equal. Okay. So once again, there are there are three um, 
okay you can have the null hypothesis that the population means are equal uh, versus the alternative that they are not equal okay and b you can have the null hypothesis they are equal uh, versus the alternative that that the first population mean is greater than the second and um, c the popul the null hypothesis that the population means are equal was the alternate to that mu x uh, is less than mu one. Okay, guys. So these are now the rejection rules are as follows. So let me write them down. Rejection rules. So the first one uh, for A, this is the, the rejection rule is as follows. If this is absolute sign, okay, not to be confused with the truncate. So this is absolute sign of X bar minus Y bar divided by the square root of SP squared, which I will de define in a minute. greater than the percentile of the t distribution you should know how to read this um, right percentile of the t I, I showed you some time ago how to read the tables for the t distribution so you should know how to read it guys okay Um, then okay, this is the rejection rule for the second set of hypotheses, and uh, finally, the rejection rule for the third set of hypotheses. Um, this one okay yes okay, so these are the these are the three rejection rules for each of them, a b and c now the sp squared is known as the full sample variance and it's defined as defined as follows so sp squared I think I might have mentioned this before in the class. I don't know, I can't remember. But anyway, I will I will write it. I will write it down anyway. Um, it's defined as one divided by m plus n minus two times Okay, this is the this is the definition of SP squared and is known as and is known as the pooled sample variance. Okay. So this just to just to just the um just okay so this so what we have done so far is we have I have shown you the rejection rules for testing equality of population means when the population variances are not known and but equal all right so that's that's number two number three number three is the most general case where 
where we are testing for um, number three is testing Testing for equality of population means when population variances Okay, so it's testing for equality of, of population means when the population variances are unknown and not equal. Okay, so this is the most uh, most general case. So, so we are assuming that the uh, once again we have uh, two random samples, but we assume that from a normal distributions, but we are assuming that the variances are not equal and they are unknown, right? Okay, so so in this case, you're, you okay, let's consider your A, B, and C. A is the um, as, as before is testing for equality of B All right, so these are the three sets of hypotheses, the corresponding rejection rule as follows. rejection rules all right first one is this where the the absolute value of x bar minus y bar divided by sx sx squared is a sample variance for the first sample Sy squared is a sample variance for the second sample greater than T uh, um, let me call it um, A okay A comma one minus alpha by two all right this is the i will define what a is in a minute right for the for the second set of hypotheses the rejection rule is as follows is x bar minus y bar divided by uh, 
got it by this, right? Greater than T A comma one minus alpha. So these are all percentiles of the T distribution. And uh, final one is X bar minus Y bar divided by What about this? Less than minus T A. This is A, okay, not to be confused with alpha. A one minus alpha. Right. Okay, now let me define what, what the different things are. So where first of all, Sx square is the sample variance for the first sample, which so which is one over m minus one. So m minus one, okay. I'm using the unbiased version. Um, okay, and uh, s y squared. It's a sample variance for the second sample, so it's one over n minus one. Okay, and um, finally, A. A is the degree of freedom parameter and is defined as follows. Um, So these are these are, these are, these are the definitions, right? So S X squared is the sample variance for the first sample. S Y squared, the sample variance for the second sample, and A is given by this complicated expression, All right? So let me just just summarize what, what we have done so far. All right. So, this, so what I have written here, guys. Hopefully you can see this is the testing for the quality of population means when population variances are unknown and not equal, right? So that's number three. Number four, which is the final one. Um, Is testing for equality of population proportion. Okay. So, so, first of all, I need some notation. Suppose each of, each of the three tests that we, that we looked at so far, we assume that the data is from a normal distribution, right? Now, for in this case, the data come from a Bernoulli distribution, right? So you have two, once again, you have two random samples.
first one is from uh, a Bernoulli distribution with parameter px. So px denotes the proportion, population proportion. Okay. And we are assuming that they are independent random samples or independent samples. And we are, of course, we are also assuming that Px, Px and Py are non. Okay. All right. So, so we we want to test for equality of the proportions. So pro the proportions being Px and Py. Okay, so so we have once again there are three three kinds of tests. Three kinds of tests are possible. Right, the first one is this is the first one, right? Um, The second one is where the proportions are equal versus Px is greater than Py. Okay, and the third one is where the proportions are equal Px is less than Py, all right? So, okay, now let me write down the rejection rules for each. So, rejection rules for the first one. Absolute value of x bar minus y bar divided by So remember x bar is a sample proportion for the first sample y bar is a sample proportion for the second sample That's the rejection rule for the first sample, and uh, for the second, for the sorry, for the first uh, hypothesis, for the second hypothesis is x bar minus y bar. So these are the, just to remind you guys one more time. So the, the, so we have, what I have done so far is to write down, oh, is to write down the rejection rules for the three, uh, for the four sets, for the four hypotheses. The first one was, excuse me. 
The first one was testing for equality of population means when the variances are known. The second was testing for equality of population means where the variances are unknown but equal. The third was testing for equality of population means when the variances are unknown and not equal. And the final one, which I've just written, is testing for equality of population proportions. Right? So these are rules, I mean, for e in each case, in each case, I've given you the rejection rules, and uh, um, I don't expect you to. Know, I mean, the, the derivations of the re rejection rules are not. It's not something that I will talk about in this course. As I said before, it will be. You will learn about them in year two, in the statistical methods course, right? Um, so. I suggest I would encourage you to take that course next year when you go to year two. Um, so, but for this course, intro to introduction to statistics, uh, I only expect you to know how to apply these rejection rules for for a particular situation, right? I will do a lot of examples, uh, starting with. Let me find a simple example for you uh, today. If I can find something, I will show you. Um, okay. Um, let me try to find an example. Um, Um, so example, well, we got time for an example to do. So example, um, example one. Okay. Um, Hello guys, you have a question? Um, that's a good question, yeah. Um, in the exam, I mean, they will be given to you or you will be asked to remember them. I mean, obviously you're not gonna have an exam. So, but in an ex if, there, if there is an exam, then you would be given the rejection rules, All right? Yeah. Um, all right, so this is example one. You have two independent random sample, one from N01, the other is from N02. Um, the question is to find beta. Beta is the type, as you know, is the probability of type two error. So how would you do this, guys? Um, all right, let me, so beta is the probability of accepting, well, before I, before I talk about beta, let me, let me, let me erase this. Let me, before I talk about 
Oh, sorry, what am I doing? Not being today, I'm making a lot of mistakes. Sorry, this should be, um, it shouldn't be zero, it should be mu mu x and mu mu y. Okay, so consider testing the null hypothesis that mu x is equal to mu y versus the alternative that mu x is say less than mu y. All right. Okay, guys. Um, okay, now the question is find or calculate, calculate beta, which is the, the probability of type, type two error. Okay. Okay, guys. So now I think we have already run out of time. So um, can you can you guys think about how to do this example uh, before it on Thursday? We have the next lecture on Thursday from 11 to 11 to noon. And please try to see how if you can. Uh, I will. I will start. Uh, if you can do. If you can try to do this by yourself before before Thursday. All uh, right, but tomorrow we have two example classes from 10 to 11 and 11 to noon. And the example classes will be based on example sheet 10, right? So please, um, if you have time, right, please try to look at example sheet 10 before you come to the example classes tomorrow, 10 to 11 and 11 to noon. And do you, do you have any questions on, on, so do you have any questions you like to ask before, before we close or? So please try to do this question by Thursday, All right? Guys, talk to me, guys. Are you guys okay or no? Hmm? Hello, guys. Is there anything that you'd like to talk to me about? Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys on... I'll see you guys tomorrow for the example classes, right? I would like more of you guys to turn up to the example classes. I don't know why only so few of you turn up, right? So please, please try to come to the example classes tomorrow, okay? Okay, right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, man. How are you? You okay? Yeah, yeah, we're both okay. Yeah, see you tomorrow. See you, see you, bye. Yeah, take care of yourself. Bye, sir. See ya. See you. See you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye. Take care. Have a good day, guys. And take care of yourself.